Hey. Hello, Internet. Uh, as you can probably tell by my empty upload section, I don't really do video blogging at all. But something happened today that made me decide to change that a bit. You know, give it a try. Uh, specifically, that was when I got up this morning. Uh, this had been posted through my door. You know, I'll admit, when I first looked at this nice green leaflet from the Coalition for Marriage with its big title, Newcastle Under Lime, For Marriage, I I was kind of hopeful, actually. I, 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 was, I, I was thinking, yeah, people are finally raising awareness that marriage equality is going to be a thing. That there, there might finally be actual equality in rights here in England. Like, about bloody time. And then I read it. Yeah. I quote, Marriage is under threat. Politicians at Westminster want to rewrite the meaning of marriage to make it genderless. But kids need a mum and a dad. Did you know all the rights of marriage are already available to same-sex couples through civil partnership? The politicians don't own marriage, and they have no right to change it. This wasn't in any of the main manifestos before the last election, and they're ignoring well over 600,000 people who've signed the petition against the plans. Typical. Don't let them get away with it. Show them that Newcastle under Lyme is for marriage. Ah. So that's what we're dealing with. Yeah, so I, I got quite annoyed about this, actually. Uh, and I was going to just go on a massive rant about how bigoted and medieval and just plain downright wrong this thing is. Uh, but instead I thought, you know what, you know what would be better than that, Tim? I'm going to go through it. I'm going to read through every single point they make and explain exactly why every single point this horrible little piece of propaganda comes out with is complete bollocks. Just before we start though, I'd actually like to thank the Coalition for Marriage uh, for not attempting to use any religious arguments in this particular flyer. Uh, because it means I don't have to explain what separation of church and state means, etc. And how individual people's religion has no impact on what the law should be. Yeah, I don't have to go into that. But also, uh, because it means they've tried to use secular arguments against equal marriage in this flyer. And there aren't any. So, let's have a look at the first point, which is... But kids need a mum and dad. Well, way to make single parents feel like shit. Also, isn't this argument meant to be against equal marriage? I mean, since when did marriage necessarily mean having kids? I mean, there's plenty of married people out there who don't have kids. Oh, hell, I'm, I don't think I ever want to have kids. And this is a com completely different issue. This is a straw man here. People... Look, gay people getting married does not necessarily mean that they're going to be adopting kids. I bet that would be a fantastic thing if they did. But this isn't anything to do with equal marriage. Why are you talking about this? Okay, point number two. Uh, did you know all the rights of marriage are already available to same-sex couples through civil partnerships? Well, no. Because the fact that you need a second w a, a different word to differentiate between two straight people and two gay people who are married, the fact that you need that different word means that 
it implies that it's somehow different. And that's what that's that's what people. Uh, this is what people want. People want it to be just be the same thing, because it is. How, how is how is two people of the same sex being in love with each other ev different from two people of a different sex? And why should that be called something different? Yeah. Next point. The politicians don't own marriage, and they have no right to change it. This wasn't in any of the main manifestos before the last election, and they're ignoring well over 600,000 people who've signed a petition against the plans. Okay. Right, so first off here. You're correct. The politicians do not own marriage. Nobody owns marriage. Marriage is like a concept. But it's also a legal thing as well, which means that if anyone is allowed to change things, because it? it's the government, therefore the, pol the politicians, as it were. So in fact, nobody else has the right to define what legal marriage means in the UK. Not even you. Yes, and uh, this wasn't in any of the main manifestos, apparently. Oh, wonderful. Great. It wasn't in... yeah. So? It's here now. It's an issue that is being, it's it's com it's being talked about all over the world now. You can't just turn around and say, "Oh, but it wasn't in it wasn't in the manifesto. We weren't given prior warning that people would want equal rights." No, 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 no. No, you do not get to do that. And oh, oh dear, the government are ignoring well over six hundred thousand people who've signed a petition against the plans. Uh, what's the current population of the U? Okay, a lot. Currently, uh, at least 53 million in England alone. Uh, 600,000 people signed the petition. You're a minority. And just so you know, when it comes to equal rights, you know, like the right to marry someone, you you don't get to decide that by mob rule. That's this isn't something you should vote on. It's rights. You, you shouldn't vote on rights. Uh, uh, okay, so now we're on to the meat of the article. Genderless marriage will be endorsed in schools, and parents who disagree will be sidelined. Teachers who refuse to do it could be disciplined or sacked. Right. So what you really mean by endorsed in schools is that kids are going to be taught that marriage is a legal contract that means that two people who love each other want to stay together get certain like legal legal benefits and rights the horror the horror that children might might be told that that is what marriage is the fact that you're leaving out the part it's only between a man and a woman. That doesn't that doesn't come into it. That's not really relevant. <laughs> Parents who disagree will be sidelined. What what do you mean sidelined? Parents who disagree disagree can disagree. In the end, you can teach your child what you like at home. If it, you, you you can you can let your child you can teach all the bigotry you like to your child, but. That's doesn't doesn't really come into the school thing. If you're going to go to the school and say no, I don't want you teaching teaching my child that ma that marriage is available for all people, then you're being a bit of an idiot. Also, teachers who refuse to do it could be disciplined or sacked. No. A teacher's job is to teach. A teacher's job is not. To express their opinion. If a teacher refuses to do their job, then yes, I can see them getting disciplined. This is this is common sense. Please please tell me this is common sense. Please. The next part is horribly similar. 
People could lose their jobs for backing traditional marriage, particularly in the public sector. Sneaky choice of words there. Right. I'm just going to have to define two things for you. Backing traditional marriage, right, means that you do not, you, you disagree with the idea of gay people getting married. Okay, that's your opinion. It's, I, I, I disagree with you. That's my opinion. But people could lose their jobs for having that opinion. No, no one loses their jobs for having that opinion. People lose their jobs when that opinion gets in the way of them doing their jobs. I'm talking about, I don't know, wedding cake makers who refuse to make cakes for gay, gay couples when their boss, boss tells them to. Yeah, they're not doing their job. People who are... And that's not even the public sector, I don't know why I, I gave that example. But, uh, marriage counsellors. Marriage counsellors refusing to speak to gay couples. That's their job. They are paid to do their job and they're refusing to do their job. Therefore, yes, they shouldn't, they shouldn't be doing it. If you feel that your opinions are so strong on this matter that it's going to affect the way you do your job, then, I'm sorry, you're going to have to find a different job if you... That sounds harsh, but that's the way it is. Sorry. So, the next point starts with, uh, marriage will be undermined if it is redefined. How exactly? I mean, I've, I've never actually understood how marriage can be undermined by it becoming more inclusive and, you know, people, gay people having the equality equality of marriage. How, how does that undermine the idea of marriage? Are, are, are heterosexual couples suddenly going to start going, oh no, my marriage has broken down because gay people are getting married now and that makes what we have wrong, worth less. No. No, that, that, that's not going to happen. That hasn't happened in any of the places that have that have equal marriage. And it goes on to say, in Spain, after they redefined marriage, overall marriage rates plummeted. And so I, I, I take it, Coalition for Marriage, that you've, you know, gone and done a, the appropriate study to, uh, you know, test the correlation versus causation of that, you know, see if it was actually the introduction of gay marriage that made, that caused a reduction in marriage rates, or did you in fact just Google marriage rates in Spain on the year that they introduced gay marriage? I have a feeling I know which one you did. As a scientist, I disapprove. The next one's an old favourite. If marriage is redefined once, what is to stop it being redefined to allow polygamy? Ah, the slippery slope argument. I haven't heard that one in a while. No, uh, this is a slippery slope argument. And by definition, that is bad. Because what you're doing there, Coalition for Marriage, you're saying that this will lead to something else that you know people will probably disapprove of. You have no evidence that will lead to that. That is a jump. You're appealing to people's emotions based on fear. That is all you are doing. And no. Marriage is, is, is redefined to include, include homosexual, homosexual people. Then the result of that will be 
marriage will include homosexual people. You don't know if anything else will come from that. So you're essentially dealing in a hypothetical situation in which something that you believe people will disapprove of will happen once this happens. And you're selling that as an almost certainty. God. Okay, the rest of this flyer is literally just reiterating uh, everything that they've already said on the other side. So, redefining marriage is undemocratic, and over six, 620,000 people have signed the petition. As I said, you do you shouldn't vote on rights. It's, it's, it's not mob rule when it comes to equality. It really isn't. How, how is this difficult? Ah. And, uh, yes, the whole, it'll have a big impact on schools, what will happen to teachers and parents who disagree, people will be punished for believing it, 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 in traditional marriage, no, people will be punished for not doing their jobs. Because... I don't know. Because they would rather let their disagreement with something that doesn't affect them in any way interfere with their job. That's what it comes to. And, oh, here's a new one. The government says churches and religious premises won't be forced to hold host gay weddings. But can anyone trust these promises? Especially if European judges get involved. Wow. So that's not paranoid at all, is it? Well, well done on playing to people's fear. You're doing it. You, you, you're doing quite a good job of making people terrified of hypothetical situations. The government has said that no religious premises will be forced to conduct gay weddings. Fine. Yes, the government has said that. You can literally say, but can we trust them? on any decision the government has made. Any promise the government has made. You can say that too. So, this literally means nothing. You realise that, don't you? <sighs> this next one's interesting. Uh, many gay people oppose redefining marriage. Why is such a monumental change being imposed throughout society? There's two things here. One, many gay people oppose redefining marriage. I'm just going to go and take a look at that the YouGov poll that they did a while ago about this. Yeah, the one that found that 9 out of 10 gay people who were in the poll supported gay marriage. Okay, so 9 out of 10. That's not the many that this is making this out to be. Okay. Also, if if some gay people don't want to don't want to get married, these new laws will not the new law would not affect them. But that 9 out of 10 if you don't, if these, these, these laws do not go through and they st still don't have the right to marry the person they love, then that, that is affecting them. That's affecting them badly. That's having a big negative impact on, on, on them. And it comes, it comes into this next bit. You're referring to it as a monumental change being imposed. No. How would it affect? It, look, I don't know who these pe you people co coalition for marriage are, but how will that affect you in any way? H how is it going to affect your marriage, your everyday life? The idea that gay people can get married. H how how is that going to go going to somehow damage you? Somehow hurt you? Because stopping gay people from getting married. That hurts them. You lose nothing by, le by letting 
gay people get married. You lose literally nothing. When you realise that, it makes sense. Uh, right, on to the last little bit uh, now. Although death and divorce may prevent it, the evidence shows that children do best with a married mother and father. Look, look, we've talked about this. I've talked about this before. The issue of equal marriage and of gay couples adopting children, two separate issues. Two different issues. This, this, this law you're talking about, Coalition for Marriage, this law is about gay marriage. Not adopting children. So this is not relevant at all to what you're asking people to do, which is opposed to this law. And just, just while we're at it as well, I think you'll actually find that the evidence shows through several studies that children from that children raised by heterosexual parents and children raised by homosexual parents have no real differences. I mean, you say do best. What the hell does that mean? Seriously? And also, I love the way you phrase it. With a married mother and father. Well, I don't know what you're comparing it to because you definitely haven't compared it to a married mother and mother or a married father and father because you're stopping them from getting married. Slow clap. So that's why this Coalition for Marriage flyer is talking complete rubbish. You know, I really don't understand this whole debate, you know, in that by introducing equal marriage for homosexual couples, that makes a lot of people very happy. That has a direct impact on their lives, which makes them very, very happy. And it has absolutely no impact on anyone else's life. There's no reason for it to have any impact on anyone else's life because it, it's not their marriage. It's not their happiness. In the end, you lose absolutely nothing by supporting equal marriage. And you gain nothing by by opposing it. I say this, and I'm giving the Coalition for Marriage here the benefits of the doubt uh, by assuming they're not thinly veiling religious reason, reasons for opposing it, uh, because then I don't have to go on about how they can't expect their own religious views to be imposed upon the entire country. Uh, but yeah, you know when I first when I first read this this morning, I got I got very angry. I got extremely angry, and my first thought was, get my housemates lighter, burn the damn thing. But you know what? I'm not going to do that. I've decided that. I'm going to turn this around. You see, what I'm going to do with this flyer is I'm going to take it downstairs. I'm going to find a big green canvas bag. I'm going to put this in there to be recycled. You know, help save the world a bit. And maybe this absolutely disgusting propaganda message could actually do some good in the world. However, I'm also going to draw a massive cock on it, because I'm mature like that. 
Tim Barley. Over and out. Take a look at my enormous penis And my troubles start melting away I take a look at my enormous penis And the happy times are coming to stay I got the thinking I dance when I glance in my pants I get the feeling like a sunshiny day Take a look at my enormous penis and everything is going my way.